one. The uh, Raven Board of Appeals is now in session. The first thing I would like to do, since we have a large crowd here, is, is read this sheet so you know everybody is on deck as how we operate. And uh, welcome to the uh, July 30th meeting, Monday, of the Board of Appeals of the Town of Raymond. The Zoning Board of Appeals will come to order. The, we do have a quorum, which we have all five members here. And I would like each member, starting from my left, to state his or her name. Patricia Beaton. Joanne Stinson. Glenn Cirelli. Steve Borshaw. I am now going to continue with him. This is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, you have the right to hear everything that is being said and to look at all the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chair if you are unable to see or hear. The board works from a published agenda and will be considering tonight's items in the following order. And I'll take that up last again. In each instance, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with the provisions of the applicable ordinances or state law. After the board votes on the merit of each application, it will prepare a written notice of decision. Because the notice of decision may substantially affect any appeals rights, and also as a matter of courtesy, the board asks that those attending the meeting with regards to a specific application not leave until the board has completed its discussion. Generally speaking, appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior, Superior Court as otherwise provided by law within 45 days of this board's decision. Also, to be certain that you preserve your individual right to file any such appeal, you must be certain that the board's record evidences your appearance this evening in opposition and the basis for your opposition. Then this is very important. All persons speaking, including the representatives of the applicant and the members of the public, are asked to stand at that microphone to sign the speaker's sheet, state their name, address, and affiliation with the application for, oppose, neutral. All persons speaking shall address all remarks or questions to the chairman. The meeting is not over till the board has formally adjourned. Any discussion not included on the meeting agenda or accepted by the board is to be held until after adjournment or conducted outside the meeting room. And to try to get, make it simple for the people, what we have on the new business is we have an application. We had an application of Jennifer L. and Ron and Finney uh, to put a house on a lot they have at 50 Canal Road. No. No. I'll, I'll, not quite. Well, we have an appeal by Jennifer and Ronald Finney from the issuance of a permit. Oh, from the issuance, yes. They, they for, applied. Right. And they were issued, at a, and they were issued a, building, uh, a building permit. No. The building no. permit was to uh, David and Tammy Knights. Right. Yeah. To Tam Ray. Okay, Tammy Knights. Okay. And uh, then a group of neighbors uh, is opposing this uh, this uh, applic you know this uh, application. And uh, what we have here, what I'd like to do to make it simple, is uh, first we have our lawyer here from Linnell Perkins Thompson Hinckley and Thaxter, and have him speak first on why he feels that the reasons for the application should be upheld. And then I would like to have uh, this gentleman here from Drummond and Woodson speak and tell us why he feels that the uh, application should be reversed. Then I would like to start with the different members of the board working down. Oh, the public goes first. Well, I think sure. the public goes first. I think the, uh, Mr. Chair, I think yeah. the applicant yeah. should speak first. Okay, the applicant we'll speak first. Yeah. And the public. <coughs> and the public. We'll right. Then the lawyers. So is the applicant here? For the appellant. I'm, the I'm appellant. representing the appellant, so 
I am not a lawyer. <laughs> it's okay. There, there are enough here to make up for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to take a minute and sign in. <coughs> so the, your form says name, address, support appeal, oppose appeal. So our appeal is f to overturn the uh, building permit, and so I'm in support of the appeal even though we're opposed to the issuance of the permit. So anyone else who comes up here and has an opportunity to do that. Um, my name is Gary Vogel. I'm an attorney at Drummond Woodson in Portland, and I represent a group of neighbors who are opposed to the issuance of this um, building permit. Um, Jennifer and Ron Finney, David and Anne Marie Murch, Thomas and Renee Cobb, Louise Lester, Travis uh, McClellan, Darcy Foley, Alicia Irish, Christopher and Elisa Tapanier, Judy Sear, and John and Joanne Taft. And there may be others who are here as well. Um, and, um, and obviously we want to reserve the right for the, those individuals as members of the public to also speak. Um, so before I begin, we do have a <coughs> package of information that um, of supporting documents that were put together <coughs> by um, some of my clients. Is that enough for each of the board members? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And there are a few documents in there that I'll refer to as we go through um, as we go through this appeal. So, um, really, the question here is, you know, whether the issuance of the building permit for the for placing a 70 by uh, a 14 by 70 mobile home with a 20, 12 by 28 foot addition is appropriate within the um, limited. Shoreland Zone Limited Residential Recreation District, LRR1. And um, essentially, there's two issues. The first issue is whether or not the application is complete um, so that the building permit should have been issued. Um, and f as we'll explain, and as many of the, uh, as many of the informa much of the information in the package of supporting documentation shows, the, the information was incomplete, in error, and should not have been the basis for uh, the issuance of, you know, of a building permit. Uh, the second issue is really whether a, you know, a, a 14 by, a 14 by 70 you know, mobile home should be permitted in this zone in the first place. And that's a second issue, you know, that we'll address as part of this appeal. Um, what this isn't about is, you know, this is not about whether or not the Knights can build on their property. They, they absolutely can. Um, we're not challenging, you know, their ability to, to build on their property. We just feel that they need to do it in conformity with the requirements of the ordinance. Um, there, there may be some confusion about the ordinance, as uh, you're probably all aware. The town has, has scheduled a special town meeting for tomorrow <coughs> night um, to, uh, to put forth the question of whether or not there should be a moratorium to, re to enable the town to clear up any confusion, if there is any. You know, frankly, we don't think it is that unclear, and that's what we're going to ask you to decide. Um, but, um, but there is a real question still, you know, whether as a matter of policy, um, <coughs> You know, what the town should allow in the shoreland zone as it relates to manufactured housing. We're also not here really to, although this is technically a challenge of the code enforcement officer, we're not here that we have a gripe with the code enforcement officer. The code enforcement officer is doing his job and, you know, and we're 
we have the right to have an appeal. So um, it's really not personal about that regard as it relates to, you know, the the homeowners who uh, who filed a building permit application or certainly the, um, the code enforcement officer. So your job as as members of the Board of Appeals, and we appreciate you coming out on a nice evening in July um, as volunteers, um, is to decide this appeal. And um, the standard of review for an administrative appeal like this is a de novo hearing, which means that you get to make the same, you're presented with the evidence and you get to essentially look at it anew, de novo, that's what de novo means, and decide applying the ordinance and the standards whether or not um, you feel that the building permit um, you know, should be issued. And so that's what your task is and that's what we're going to be asking you to do. Um, in this case, um, the Knights own um, a couple of small lots that were created at a point in time when the permit, when the um, ordinance allowed that, they've become grandfathered non-conforming lots because the ordinance no longer allows lots of this size. Uh, it may have been an error in terms of the the um, uh, lots being enabled to be that size in this zone, but in any event, they are. They they uh, were able to take advantage of that. They've put them in separate ownership there really isn't a question about that even though you know these are uh, now undersized you know non-conforming lots but your ordinance allows them to be built on as lots of record so that's that's not an issue uh, either um, what is an issue as I said is the application itself so um, and, and in the supporting documentation that we um, submitted, um, you can see, number one, you can see the, the lots that we're talking about, um, 20A and 20B on page three. And this, prop, this uh, application was to, bit, to put the, the um, manufactured home on lot 20A. And uh, there's also a number of the um, items from the building permit application that are contained, you know, in the application that are in this package. Um, so it included a subsurface wastewater disposal application, which is part of the building permit application in order to be able to build a build on a lot that is not served by public sewer, you have to have a valid subsurface wastewater disposal application. In this case, the wastewater permit application is inaccurate. It, it does not indicate that the property is located in the shoreland zone. Um, and the subsurface wastewater you know, application has to be um, prepared by a, um, a qualified um, soil scientist. And you know, in this case, we think that he may not have had the proper information. The permit is for a proposed system designed to serve two separate multifamily duplexes on two lots, which is obviously inconsistent with what's here, um, and also omits the information necessary to determine whether the leach field meets the minimum setback distances from, from their well or potable water supply. Um, thus, the applicant has not demonstrated conformity with the wastewater subsurface um, application. Um, and the materials on page, uh, excuse me, um, materials on page in section 3.9 on page 13. Um, and on page 12 show where the property, it shows that it was indicated that it was not in a shoreland zone. It was showed that it was going to be on two lots. This is obviously incorrect. 
and on page 14 it shows that it was going to be uh, a duplex um, with a septic tank between the two buildings. Obviously not what we're dealing with here. Um, so there are other issues and problems with the application as well. Um, <coughs> The, um, the location of the building is shown on the plan is inconsistent with the, with the plan. Um, there are a number of items that are left blank on the, both for the trailer on, and the addition, both uh, as shown on page eight of the supplemental materials, the areas that are highlighted. Um, doesn't des describe floors, exterior walls, interior walls, ceilings, roof, etc. There's also a substantial issue about whether or not the property has appropriate access. If you look at the, um, if you look at the photograph on page 30, you'll see that the driveway comes in off of, um, at least based upon the information that's available on Google Earth, it crosses a little triangle of property that's not owned by, you know, the applicant um, over one lot and onto, uh, and onto the other lot on which the, uh, <coughs> on which the building is to be built. Um, so although there's access on a public road, um, the existing driveway may not be appropriate and may require additional survey or easements. Um, so as I said, we think that the application itself is, is really incomplete um, and should not have been the basis for issuing a building permit. I think it's pretty well settled that you know until you have an application that's complete you don't get you should not get a building permit nor should you be essentially um, vested under the zoning that exists at that time now that's important because if the town changes puts a moratorium in place tomorrow and the building permit application is incomplete they shouldn't be entitled to proceed with that um, building permit uh, with an application. If, on the other hand, someone filed a complete application and the moratorium came in and the town didn't issue the permit, that's a different question in terms of whether or not the building permit should be issued based upon a complete application that came in prior to the time that the zoning was changed or prior to the time that there was a moratorium. Obviously, we don't know whether that there's going to be a moratorium. That's up to the town, but it is a substantial issue that that the town, the selectmen felt there was, you know, um, significant enough to propose a moratorium that will be voted on tomorrow night. So the next issue I'd like to talk about is whether or not um, these types of manufactured homes should be allowed in the um, LRR1 <laughs> district. And this really um, comes down to um, information that was pre prepared by the town and available on the um, town's website which is located in your material in the supplemental supporting documentation. What page? Thank you. On page 19. So you'll see on page 19, this was information, excerpt of district regulations um, that was available on the town's website that shows, um, and there's a, there's a line um, showing uh, a, a category for manufactured home greater than 14 feet and, um, and later than 1976. And when you get to the category of the LRR1 zone, it indicates that it's not, um, it's not permitted in this zone. 
Now the code enforcement officer, that, now this is not, the table is not the ordinance itself, but it's information that the town has provided to the public to help the code enforcement officer and the public um, determine you know, what should, how to uh, evaluate the ordinance, and we think it effectively is part of the information that should be applied when determining whether or not to permit a, a um, manufactured home on the ordinance. And specifically, you know, it sort of deals with modular homes, for example, are, are permitted in the zone. Um, so really what we're talking about is, um, you know, manufactured homes that are more essentially like trailers. In this case, we're dealing with a single wide trailer with a 12 by 28 um, addition. Um, so these district regulations expressly prohibit manufactured homes. Um, the LRR1 zone permits single family homes as a permitted use, and we understand that the code enforcement officer looked at the definition of single family home and um, determined that uh, a manufactured home could be a single family home. And I think that's, that's true. Um, and it may be that uh, certain types of manufactured homes could potentially be there. But a single family home really is talking about a use of property, not a building type. And so what this table deals with is it deals with uses, single family, two family, but it also deals with building types. And the ordinance, um, the, the code enforcement officer made the determination that um, single family homes would have to permit these, you know, mobile homes without regard to this table of land uses. And obviously if you applied the table of land uses as to the town's interpretation of the ordinance, you would say these types of <coughs> manufactured homes are not permitted in this zone. And as I said before, we have no quarrel about whether or not they can put a building you know, erect a building on this lot. It's just this type of building is not um, permitted. Um, so the town, you know, the, the ordinance specifically makes, and the, the, um, the, the table makes no specific mention of dwelling units. Dwelling units, or, you know, tend to refer to a physical object, um, not a land use. Um, it may have been appropriate to determine that manufactured homes were permitted um, in the LRR1 zone if there were no other guidance. But here we have this guidance from this table. And we feel that um, the, the uh, allowance of a single wide mobile home, you know, was clearly intended to be prohibited and that this table shows that and that the code enforcement officer should have applied that. And it's your opportunity now in this de novo hearing to have the opportunity to do that in the first instance and decide whether or not this type of building, you know, should be allowed in the zone. So, um, as a result, you know, we request that the Board of Appeals reverse the Code Enforcement Officer's decision, really for the two reasons, that the application is incomplete and that these types of um, uh, manufactured homes are not intended, you know, to be permitted under the, under the ordinance. Um, there are a number of other issues that um, are addressed in the supporting documentation. Um, and I know that some of the folks who are here, you know, may want to speak to them. So unless you have any questions for me, um, I'll sit down, but I'd like to, you know, reserve the right to to um, you know, speak if there's any questions that are raised by the board or by the property owners that uh, that would be appropriate for um, further comment. Thank you very much. Now we have uh, a lawyer. For right now, uh, well, first of all, uh, for the record, Jim Katsapikas with the law firm of Perkins Thompson here representing the board tonight. Just to be clear, my role here tonight is as neutral counsel to an impartial board. 
I, I'm, I've not been advising the code enforcement officer. Uh, I was called today to come in and, and advise the board at this, uh, for this meeting. I think probably the better course right now, uh, Chair Merch, would be to hear from the public, the neighbors, the, the other appellants, and then when you have questions uh, about the arguments that have been raised or about the ordinance, about what this all means, then I'd be happy to try to answer those questions. I think that's probably the, the better use of time to get the issues out on the table. Okay. Then can we turn it over to the public now? And each person that speaks goes to the microphone. And uh, so let's start with those that are against overturning the ruling of the, the granting of the permit. Is there anybody here that is against, <coughs> would like to speak as against overturning the ruling of the permit? All right. Is there anybody here that would like to speak for? Would you please go to the microphone and state your name? And, Mr. And Chair, Mr. Chair, excuse me one second. Do we have a question as to whether there is someone who needs to speak? Uh, I understand. Well, we understand that the, the property owners, the Knights, are here. They're the ones whose permit is being challenged, and they would be in, they may not have understood uh, that they could speak on this, but uh, okay. the idea is to. Would the, would the Knights like I, to well, I, I think it would be best to hear from the appellants right now. Mr. Vogel made the overall argument on behalf of his clients. It probably makes sense to let them finish, All but right. then uh, to let the Knights have an opportunity, if they wish, to, to speak in rebuttal. Louise. Yeah. Okay. I'm Louise Lester, 10 Hartley Lane. Um, I was introduced to this situ okay. Uh, I was introduced to this uh, issue uh, by the people that lived on Canal Road, and um, found that I was involved to the extent that my subdivision abuts the lot that they are talking about, putting a mobile home on. Uh, in the first place, I don't think mobile homes are appropriate for the neighborhood. In the second, um, I realized that their driveway actually crosses my land. And I have never heard from the Knights about permission to do so. Um, I don't know how I would feel about it, but I do feel that certainly a survey is necessary to determine exactly where the property line is. Um, I have no um, desire to stop them from building, but I really don't think the neighborhood uh, should have uh, a trailer parked in it. They also have a second lot, and rumor has it that they plan eventually to put a second trailer in on the other lot. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody here else who would like to speak? Would you go to the lectern? <coughs> Give us your name and address and speak loud. So good evening. My name is David Merch. My wife and I, Anne Marie, we live at 2 Canal Road, Raymond, Maine. We're actually directly across from the property that's currently has the, the building permit uh, issued for it. I would like to say clearly off the spot that we love the Knights, we love their family, we've done lots of things with their family, so we have no issue with, with David and Tammy, but as the lawyer stated, we do have issue uh, with, the, with the building of a, or placement of a trailer or that piece of property. So, um, and I will say too that uh, we have no issue with Scott. We, we have found Scott to be extremely helpful to us in regards to the questions that we've had uh, and being able to approach him and talk to him about our concerns leading up to this and beyond this. So thank you, Scott. <coughs> but I will say, uh, I think Gary's done a great job. I would like just for the public record to at least state specifically, you know, some of the issues we've seen with the, with the permit. Incomplete foundation section, incomplete roofing section, lack of proper plans accompanying the form. Page eight of our supporting document clearly shows uh, a building permit that appears very incomplete. 
uh, lack of information or floor plan with regards to the addition or the trailer itself. Uh, permit indicates, or at least the uh, submission requirements document indicates that an electrical permit was required with this. There was no electrical permit found uh, with the public file at the end of Ju uh, June. On the wastewater, subsurface wastewater application, it is for lots B and A. David has indicated that he's the owner of both of those lots and signed off as the owner. Tammy Knights is the owner of lot A. As uh, Gary has indicated, uh, the wastewater is indicated as shoreland zoning no. Inconsistency with the whole plan altogether, the building plan that was uh, submitted indicates a trailer placement on one lot. Uh, the wastewater indicates uh, a duplex, two duplexes actually. The, for the building plan itself, the placement orientation of the trailer is inconsistent with the placement orientation of the duplex. There also appears to be, if you look on Google Maps and as well as the town maps, there does show the tendency for water accumulation on these two lots. So we're concerned that there's not sufficient drainage for that property. And additionally, when the, uh, according to the Shoreland Zoning Section 16, Item C.5, uh, a person who is certified in uh, DEP erosion control practices their name and certificate certification number needed to be a part of that application. It was not. We're also concerned, uh, just for myself, in regards to the overall uh, design of the project that's being uh, done. If you refer to page 25 of the document, we kind of show that there's a, a map lots there there's lot 20 lot 20b lot 20a lot 20 is owned by david and tammy 20b is owned by david and 20a is owned by tammy uh, but if you look at the subsequent pages and the design for the wastewater system it's really looks like they're trying to make use of three individual lots but viewing it as one lot so for lot C, which is on page 27, which is really lot 20, that's David and Tammy, that's where their home is. Uh, their well is located on lot A. Uh, their leach field is located on lot B and A. So that's, that's, that's the current design of the property. If they are going to add additional property onto this, these locations, lot A, uh, if the manufactured home goes there, the trailer, then the leach field is going to go on lot A. But if you look on actually look page 28 of the supporting document, you can see how there's a proposal for another duplex, or at least another, another house on lot B. So that's going to be a shared, a shared um, septic system there. So our concern is overall, this is an overall building project which encompasses three different lots. So, you know, if something goes wrong with lot A, or excuse me, lot, like if the well goes bad on David and Tammy's lot, well, the property owner of A is really the one who has responsibility to that. So in the long run, our concern is, okay, if David and Tammy decide to sell these properties, what's gonna happen? I mean, nobody's gonna be able to buy an individual lot there and have it be self-sustaining or self its own unit. Their wells are shared, septic shared, driveway shared. Uh, so it's our concern there for the future of the property, uh, what's going to happen. So we kind of lined out on page 29 all the different, if I were an individual owner of lot 20, lot 20B, or lot 20A, what am I going to have to consider? Uh, and then obviously on page 30, uh, Luis and Gary also indicated uh, just right now actual access to lot uh, 20A where it looks like her property is actually, you know, where the driveway access is. So uh, if anything, you know, we need to consider, you know, how, how is proper access to that property. So that is really all I have at this point. I mean, we certainly have concerns about the effects of a, of a trailer on that property. Um, 
trailers are considered personal property. Uh, they, they depreciate in value, so they're not actually a home uh, per se. It's like a stick belt home. So it's going to depreciate over time. Uh, there's concerns, uh, real estate people have advised us that it's difficult to sell a home when there's a uh, trailer within view of your own home. And, you know, this trailer will be the first thing you see when you go into our, our community. So I will say, you know, if you look, if you look on page five, you'll see clearly that all of us are, you know, all of us in our community, which, you know, it's been a great community. Nobody's, nobody's left our community except through death. Uh, and we love our community and we want to, we just, we're concerned. And as a community, we've come out here to voice our concerns. And as I've said again, and I'll, I'll repeat it, we love David and Tammy. We don't have any issue with them. We just have an issue with placing on the trailer on that property. Thank you for your time. Yes. Could I ask you one question to just of course, sir. At different times you say trailers and at different times you say manufactured homes. To me, a manufactured home is something you get from KBS or Twin Town Homes, and a trailer is something you would see sitting at Oxford Pines Trailer Park. What is it that, what is exactly, you say trailer or manufactured home, which are they wanting to put in? The technical term is, is manufactured home. A manufactured home. That's what I want to find out. But so for clarification, though, I will say that it, it's just a, it's a naming convention. Prior to 1976, a trailer, it was called a trailer or a mobile home. After 1976, they were rebranded to call, be called manufactured homes. Exactly. So in a sense, they're the same thing. Uh, it's just after 1976, because of HUD stepping in and putting in requirements, they've rebranded them as manufactured homes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? Would you please go to the lectern, speak loudly so we can hear you, and tell us your name and address. My name is Jennifer Finney. I live at Four Canal Road, and I'm actually directly across from Lot B on the documentation that you have, diagonal across from Lot A. Speak louder. <laughs> okay. And just for the record, I'm not going to repeat everything um, that David just said, but but I did owe every thing that he did mention in terms of the inaccuracy of the building permit. Um, one thing to mention is that it's not stated, I don't believe, on the permit, but we heard that the trailer manufactured home type one um, is um, a 1979, so we do have concerns about the age of that. Um, for, for me personally, um, I'm going to speak more to the use of it because that's what started down this road. Um, we first heard that a trailer manufactured home type one, however you want to refer to it, it's one of the same in my mind, um, was going to come into the neighborhood. Um, I had huge concerns because the lot um, there was a zoning change in our ordinance, which is why this moratorium is coming into play um, tomorrow. Um, in June of 2014 is when the zoning got reversed. Uh, May of 2014 is when these two lots were split off, and at the time it was Village Residential 1, and in that zone, mobile homes are not allowed. The zoning got changed at a town meeting to the LRR1, and four years later, David goes in to try to put a trailer on these lots and is told that he can. And so when we heard that this was going to occur, my immediate reaction was very concerned for my home value because when we bought into this neighborhood 24 years ago, um, our covenants in our subdivision say that no mobile homes are allowed and at the zoning at the time, they weren't allowed. So all these years, we're under the assumption that this cannot occur and suddenly it comes about um, that according to Scott's um, interpretation, that it can be allowed. So our, that's when we all started talking and started doing some homework. And in looking at the ordinances and comparing the two, the land use ordinance, if you read down through it, strictly articulates clearly where mobile home trailers, manufactured housing type one, are allowed or not allowed. Um, but then in the shoreland zone, it's not as clearly articulated. And so that's where this gray area of interpretation came into play with Scott. When he started looking down through the, the table that is in the shoreland zoning ordinance, it states that um, 
single family residential is um, allowed in the LRR1 zone um, by permit by the CEO. However, it does not state anything clearly about the manufactured housing type one. Whereas land use does, this doesn't. So that's where this gray area of interpretation came into play when you started looking down through the um, definitions. And if you look through the definitions of shoreland zoning, it talks about dwelling unit, but it's not talking about single family residential. So to come up with his interpretation, we did not feel um, that we were not in agreement on that. And then the cheat sheet of the summary that was created by the town and being passed out to residents when they apply for permits being put online clearly states no. We as residents would assume that it's not allowed. So therefore, we are, in terms of the, the usage part, we do not agree with Scott's interpretation of the ordinance and that it's allowed use. And therefore, we ask that you overturn his decision um, based on all of the incompleteness of the permit application, but also the use. Um, and hopefully, you know, once hopefully the moratorium passes and this can get vetted, um, because I highly doubt all of these <laughs> residents that live throughout town in the LR1, <coughs> LRR2 would want a mobile home trailer manufacturer housing type one um, moved into a lot. Um, especially you think of some of the homes down on Raymond Cape. My house is not a Raymond Cape type house, but I'm pretty sure they wouldn't want this sort of use in, and according to his interpretation, that could occur. So I, I highly, I do not see anywhere in the ordinance um, where that was the intention or the interpretation at the time that was written. So that is what I would just request that the, the board overturn Scott's decision, and, and thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? Seeing that there's no one. Now we are down to So the, all of the all of those who support the appeal have spoken. Uh, is there anyone who does not support the appeal? Anyone who opposes it? I didn't mean to take your place, Mr. Chair. No, you you know. Uh, would you want to? Do you want to just? Do you want to speak or? Do you want to speak? I can. Yeah. Well, that's would up you to you. Come, come to the board and state your name and tell us your situation. My name is David Knights. I live at 5 Canal Road, and I do oppose the overturning of the building <coughs> permit. Um, we, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to try to be. Um, and basically, I just want to say that we've done everything that we feel that we needed to with Scott. We've met with him I don't know how many times trying to get everything right to be able to do this. And as far as we knew from what we were reading and what Scott was telling us, we could do this. And we are just trying to better ourselves in the town. And um, the lot that we're putting this uh, manufactured home on, we've tried to leave a buffer of trees along the road so that you're not going to see it if that's one of their concerns. Um, we feel we've done a good job of that. And other than that, I just want to say that I do oppose the overturning. Thank you. May I ask you a question? Yes. Did you have a survey done about regarding the, uh, the driveway crossing Louise Lester's property? The driveway has been there for 30 years, I would say. We had a survey done. And the, the little triangle that it goes across is actually owned by my dad. And we just haven't had it surveyed to get it turned over to us, which is, there are, there are things that we <coughs> can do down the road. And there was a lot of things that were talked about with um, the well being on a different piece than our house and different things. As far as we knew or know, talking to Scott, is things like that can be done if we ever decide to sell it. We can get easements, we can change different things um, with the property um, if we have, but 
at this point, we're not going to sell it. So we, f we feel, and talking to Scott, that we can do what we're doing. And can you clarify just the point about someone signing off on a permit who wasn't an owner? Were you one of the ones that signed off on one of the properties that you did not own a permit? Did I understand that Possibly correctly? Possibly. I signed some permits, could have been, because my, my wife, her and I own them together. So, I mean, okay. we just split them up differently. You mean you both, both names are on the deeds? No. Okay, then, then you, you don't, don't own them together. No. Okay. Okay, okay thank you. Yep. I'm Tammy Knights, and I live at 5 Canal Road, and I oppose this <coughs> application appeal. Can you hear me? Louder, louder. I'm Tammy Knights, and I live at 5 Canal Road, and I oppose the overturning of this application. And um, I ditto what my husband says. The only other thing I, I can think of is it's a 1981 um, 14 by 70 and it's been updated. It has uh, siding, it has shutters, it has the appropriate roof pitch, it has shingles. Um, all the inside has been updated. It does not look like what people consider um, a trailer. It's got wooden floors, it's got uh, wooden, the whole inside has been redone. It does not look like a trailer. So. I just want to say no one came asking us any questions. They just went directly to the town. Um, we're very workable people. If they had any questions, I wish they would have come to us. Um, we love our neighborhood. We love the people in our neighborhood. And we love the merchants. <laughs> um, I don't know what else to say. Do you have any questions for me? <laughs> Can you tell me about the uh, other construction that's going to, that you're planning that to go with this 14 by 70 manufactured home? If if we can, that's what we would like to do. Yes. Well, doesn't doesn't the application include the 12 by whatever it is? No. Oh, you mean the 12 by 28? Yes. Oh, what would you like to know? I'd like to know what it is. It's uh, it hasn't been completed, but it's. Uh, it's studded in, and it's it's it, a it's a wood structure. It's a stick built edition. It's a stick built edition. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And you, you don't have any. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, no, go ahead. You don't have any plans of yet as yet drawn up for the other two lots. There's only one other lot. One other lot. Yeah. Uh, no. You live on lot A. No. You live on right. Okay. Yes. That's right. And what is your home? You live on. We live on. Uh, I think it's 50 C. No. It, well, it's lot C, okay. wherever it's all divided lot out. C. Yeah, it goes C, B, A. And okay. C is both of us, B. I mean, for the book of deeds, that's the way they told us we had to do it. So B would be David, and then A would be mine. They said that if you had a lot in between that was by, say, if I put lot B, then it would just go right into lot C. So. We kind of look at it as that we both yeah. own them, so um, that, that's how we look at things, but I realize... Uh, I do have a question about that. Okay, so there's three lots. Can you... Let's go through the lots again. So you're saying... What is she saying? CBA. C -B yes. Yeah. But we're, we're seeing 20, 20B, and 20A. You shouldn't be seeing B. No. no. What is it? 20 you should be C. connecting these right here. You have one, two, three. Just looking at this. Isn't that what you're saying? 20 is C. It depends which, which right. So which that's one considered C. Up. Okay. So who the owner of C is? Me, Tammy Knights. All alone. Yes. The owner of B is my husband David. All alone. Yes. And the owner of. The last is? It's yeah. both of us. Both of you. Yes. That's where our house sits. The city is the house. Just so you know what it works. That way you don't get it. It's 
right here, hon. C. C is on us, right. Okay. Your, your C, your house, and yeah. then A is right across. I didn't From say that? No. no. But I just <laughs> didn't want you to get yourself in the knee. Sorry, thank you, Andy. It's okay. So is that correct? We're 20C. Okay. Our house sits on 20C. Right now. They own that one together. We own that right. one together. Oh, it's a reverse. So it's yeah. on the very corner. That's you. Yeah. Well, originally the property was all together. And then um, it was our understanding that the way that the law was is that we could subdivide. And we asked if we could subdivide. We went up. And Chris was the code enforcer at the time. And he says, you can subdivide. And we met all the qualifications. Okay. We put it in the book of deeds. We okay. put it in there, and then when we submitted this, um, we were building on C. We only put a permit in for A, sorry, A. Okay. Put a permit in okay. for A. Can I just make sure which page we're looking at? I'm, I'm getting I, I was on five. Which page? Five. Five. Yeah, thank I was you very on much. Five. Yep. Thank so you. 20 is really C. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. And that's, thank you very much. That's that's. <coughs> C is B is B is but nothing B, right now, B, and A is what we're talking about. The question where the manufactured home will be is on the corner A. Twenty A. Yes. yes, and we can put the driveway for this anywhere, and the piece that they're talking about is owned by his father. And when you say it's owned by his father, he has the deed to it. The little triangle. The little triangle piece that so the Louise actual Lester piece, was talking about. Or is about. it like an easement, a right of no. way? I don't know the whole thing, but what I recall, because we're talking many years ago, that that is Rodney, Rodney B. Knight Sr.'s property. And it was my understanding that Louise Lester had to have an easement to go in there. I, I don't know. I really don't know. But it's Rodney Knight's property. He has the deed and everything. So there's a deed that shows this? It. He owned the property that Travis sits on. And by the way, I also want to say we're not in the subdivision technicality when Jen was talking. We're not technically under the laws that Jen was talking about when she was referring to it's in our bylaws that we can't have trailers. Oh, okay. But as far as this triangle, there's a deed that it's shows that this is a piece of property. Yes. Louise, would you come up? And Do you want me to sit down or step over? Yeah. You can just step over. Yes. <laughs> Louise Lester, 10 Hartley Lane. Um, when. Yeah, this will really confuse you. <laughs> Lot 38, with the, which Travis owns now. When that was created by Rodney, he Lot needed 38. more space for an easement for the driveway. So he traded me land from the, the other side, which would be toward 20A, for that land. So it shifted everything. So in fact, I do own that land. So he's, is I'm, it correct that there may be some deeds that have language oh yeah. in them, but deeds can be confusing, yep. um, but nothing has been surveyed, officially surveyed. Not, oh yeah, we've gotten not, our stuff not, surveyed. We had Not to. that little piece. Yeah. Our stuff just got surveyed just recently, yes. Okay. That would yeah. be non-conforming, you can't create a little piece like so that. So anyway, it was, it was for, for me, it was uh, surveyed years ago. So this trade, and change of land ownership yeah. was surveyed and is recorded somewhere. Yes. <laughs> okay. But there's disagreement about what the survey says? Well, I have no idea. Okay. All I know is we, this would have been back when they, Rodney first developed the, the whole neighborhood. Um, so that was, how many years ago was that? 30 years ago, I guess? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's possible that it got lost in the shuffle. But indeed, I traded land for, from Rodney. So he had what he needed for Lot 38 for driveway. And we just shoved my land over so I would have an easement out onto Canal Road as well. And that was, I 
should yeah, forgive me, but land, that was land the trade was legally done yes. through proper real yeah. estate transactions. Yeah. Okay. okay. So Thank it sounds you. like you believe there's a survey, and the Knights believe there's a survey, and we don't know what what in fact is the case. Right. Okay. Thank you. Tax maps based on the survey. I didn't can, you, can you go up to the? Sorry. <laughs> My name is Elisa Trepanya, 5 Salmon Run, formerly the uh, GIS coordinator for the town of Raymond. Um, at one point, the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals recording secretary and wore many other hats. Um, I updated the tax map, which is what you're looking at on, I think, page 5. That's a portion of the tax map. And I think Pat Kayer, didn't Pat Kayer do your yes. update? Yes not that long ago, um, did an update, updated survey of Louise's uh, subdivision that is shown as an abutter there. Um, I personally saw that survey. Um, in fact, um, I don't think I did the mapping that broke off their two lots, but the rest of the mapping that's on there I've done, and I did see the survey for the, uh, and interpreted the survey for um, Louise's subdivision. and. To say that Rodney still owns a small square, Scott, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you can you create a deed that creates a tiny non-conforming lot? I guess you can, but... Um, well, you're not supposed to create a non-conforming lot, yes. So if he's got a little triangle there, um, I've never seen it in any of the surveys and documentations I've processed when I worked as the map maker. <coughs> anything more you want to say or any questions? Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. The, the driveway obviously um, doesn't have to be there um, if there is an issue with it. It was my understanding, it's our understanding that his dad's told us he owns it. Um, okay. Are there any more questions from the board? Any? Uh, not, not for the public. Not for the public. Yeah. Well, if the applicant is done, definitely need to do it. Ah, the applicant is complete. <laughs> so where are we now? So that would mean the public hearing is closed. Mm -hmm. Anybody yes. want to speak before that happens? I if I may for just a minute. Gary Vogel from Drummond Woods. <coughs> so, uh, Gary Vogel, Drummond Woodson, thank you. Um, when we are looking at the map on page five, you know, the, the beige colored area is the common land that surrounds the Saddlebag Pond subdivision owned by Louise. Um, I have had the opportunity to work on that. Um, it is my understanding, of course, this is the tax map and not a survey, but that the, that the beige area, you can see the word common at the top is sort of cut off, but that common land is, you know, part of what's owned by Louise and that is um, shown on the tax map. It is my understanding that this is consistent with the survey, um, but as I said, um, you know, in connection with this appeal, we haven't, you know, looked at that at that particular issue. Obviously, they could move the driveway if they wanted to, but I think it's just another example of, you know, one of the many ways in which this, you know, application is incomplete. Um, you know, and the, the uh, other provision is what we're really talking about in terms of the use is that the LR1 zone, you know, allows single-family homes. Um, and we have no quarrel with a single-family home. The question is, whether a type one manufactured home, which is the narrow, you know, 14 by 70 mobile home was permitted, um, the town issued this table, you know, to provide guidance on those uses within various portions of the, uh, of the um, 
zoning districts throughout the town, um, you know, and this is published by the town, and as we stated previously, we think this should have been controlling rather than just looking at the question of the single family use that automatically must therefore, you know, allow any type of manufactured home, including a type one, you know, what used to be referred to as a mobile home, uh, because clearly that's not the intent of the ordinance when you look at this. So I think that's the decision that we're asking you to, to make and appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. <coughs> now, uh, if the public, if the public is done speaking, we will Oh, it's one more. Go to the... Tammy Knights, Five Canal. I don't know what I'm supposed to say or not. Um, we, any questions that we had, um, Scott took to the town lawyer. So as far as we're concerned, we did everything by what the town lawyer said that we needed <coughs> to do. Thank you. Now, if the public is done speaking, we will now close the public hearing part and move on to the board comments. Well, I have, um, I'd like to ask Scott a question. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I taught in various places for many years. And if I got an application like this, I'd have given it a key minus. It is absent m m many of the details that the, that the appellants have pointed out. I, I, how'd you approve this thing? There are several, I can ask for engineer drawings, I can ask for architectural drawings. Scott, I'm just talking about the application. For? Uh, that I, that, Which that part? I have in front of me, where, there, where if you look at it, there are all these empty spaces. That's because, it, for me, it was a manufactured home, which doesn't require anything for me to look at. It. That's why I asked for a cross-section ah. of the drawing of the addition. I see. It's a manufactured home. I don't inspect them. They are built and inspected at where they are built. And then they are trucked here. But okay. there's no inspections required for me. Okay, so that takes, that takes care of that, that. My next question. Has, has, to, has to do with the septic. <coughs> now, what I'm understanding is that there's one septic system, okay? It currently serves the Knight's family home. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. No, it does not. Not the one that's on there. So you, there is another septic system someplace on these three, in these three lots. If you were to look at the there is a diagram in there that shows a darkened area, which is the Knights' uh, septic system. I saw it in here. Let see if I can find it real quick. It is located on one of the other lots. That's on. It's located on lot 20B. Okay. So the, the okay. I see. But the, the way I look at the way I'm I'm looking at this, uh, and again maybe it's me and I, I'm just not understanding it. But that's fine. Lot B also has a duplex on it. Well, it has the potential of it's just to be proposed if they at the time when they first had this drawn up. They hadn't made up their mind exactly what it was that they were doing, whether it was a trailer or a stick bill. Okay, okay. All right, so we don't know what's going to go on lot B. Correct. We do know that w about, uh, the type one manufactured house is going to go on lot A. Yep. Okay. If the Knight's current se septic system is on lot B, and I see that there's a leach field noted. Yep, Then they are there. Then whatever goes on lot B it has, <coughs> to, is, it has to have a, its own leach field. No, no, it does not. You can go up to <coughs> two, two or up to three per septic system as long as it's engineered for that amount of bedrooms. It doesn't have to be on that lot that it serves. It just has to be, like I said, they would have to give some if lot B was to ever be separated off. 
they would have to get a deed of easement that they'd be allowed to, or an agreement as to who repaired that manufactured, I mean, uh, who repaired that septic system. It's nothing as far as ordinances, there's nothing in there requiring anything like that. Um, as far as <coughs> the septic system can be on someone else's lot, as long as they have an easement off that lot, they can do that. Okay. And that's usually, a, that usually occurs when there's two, two different owners, not related. Mm -hmm. that they'll give an easement and for the septic yeah. system. Uh, and then, how about the business, of, uh, how about the well, the water supply? <clears throat> well, the well is 100 feet away from the septic system. The the current septic system, the one that's the one unlocked? That's the, one that they're, the one that they're going to be putting in. Oh, okay, the and proposed also, one. And it's also more than 100 feet away from the existing one okay. that's in there now. All right. And the same thing with that, a, a well can feed yeah. Up to, according to the state, up to seven units before it's considered a municipal water supply, right. public water supply. Okay. Again, as long as there's an easement, if they are allowed to share that well, then that's perfectly, that's a legal matter more than an ordinance matter. So, basically what, 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 this, what this comes down to is that you've interpreted this application as meeting all the requirements for the uh, placing the proposed manufactured home on lot A. Yes. Okay. So Scott, when you said that um, because it's a manufactured home, that's why all this stuff doesn't have to be filled out. Correct. But all the, so that addresses all their questions <laughs> about Permitting problems, for example, on this on um, page 12, where they had, and we had it in our packets as well, shoreland zoning falsely marked as no, the subsurface wastewater disposal system application. Yeah. What, what was the, what's the impact of that being marked as no, and why was that marked no? That would probably be marked no because the site evaluator was going by state. DEP, which is 250 feet, whereas the town of Raymond adapted 600 feet. It was basically not knowing the local ordinance. Okay. He was going by state. So should it have gone by the town? <sighs> to me, it's kind of a moot point because it's beyond the 600, it's beyond the 250, which is what state's required. So he is correct on that. However, the local ordinances dictate otherwise that it falls within shoreland zoning. But the state ordinance, the state ruling over supersedes, is that the right way to put it? Is that what we, is that the overruling? Well, I mean, whatever stricter pre prevails. Right, right. Um, we, there are some issues that we're working out now that shoreland zoning sometimes, because we adapted to 600, is actually creating some issues because we're now taking that 250 regulations and stretching it out to the 600. There are little, little things on there. Can he, is, is it in shoreland zoning according to our local ordinances? Yes. yes. According to the state, no. So if we followed the local ordinance on that, would we have done something different? Um, probably would have had it checked. Would I would have had it just checked as it is in Shoreland or right on there that it is in Shoreland. I would have asked, it may be on, it would have asked for a revision with it being checked on there from the site evaluator. But I think, um, I think someone said we would have had DEP shoreland zoning approval? Mm, no, not for but that far away. No, it's not. over 250 feet away. It does not even require Portland Water District either. Because the state doesn't. So yeah, well, Portland Water District has their own right. Uh, their own distance that they look at. Um, I did contact them, told them uh, where it was, how where it was located. They showed no interest in needing a permit through them. Okay. Scott, this is, I'm looking at this application. It says the disposal system to serve single family dwelling unit number of bedrooms 10? Yep. There's 
There's no regulation as to how big of a system you can put on it. There is a regulation okay. on how small you can put on it. Okay. And this design will serve 10, uh, ten, ten bedrooms? It could, yes. Okay. And maybe for our attorney, if I may. Is this Please. the appropriate it, time? It's fine. Um, I do, uh, let's see, where's that? Let me find everything I want to, I can't find everything I want to ask, but I'll find what I can. Please just give me one minute. Because I know we're. It seems like one of the biggest questions here is whether this type one manufactured home is allowed in LRR1 right. zone. Prepared That's the to question. answer that for you. Right. Right. And um, please, if anyone else has comments or has seen different things, please don't interrupt me or whatnot. But in shoreland zoning, it appears very generic. It says a single family home. It doesn't give <coughs> anything specific beyond that that I recall, and we'll look at that. Um, it's this excerpt that was on the website that looked like it was trying to bring in all the different zones and what's allowed and what's not to clarify for the public. Is that, so that is legally an official document posted by the town? I'm trying to find my. I'll say it's a, if it was prepared by the town in the course of public business, it was a public record. And so some people are, in, people are entitled to see it, inspect it, copy it under the Freedom of Access Act. But what the town enforces is what the town meeting adopts as an ordinance. And the town meeting adopted this land use ordinance. And for the areas in the shoreland, the town meeting adopted the shoreland zoning ordinance. These are the documents that the code enforcement officer looks at and that this board looks at and that a court reviewing this matter, if it were to go there, would be looking to see did the code enforcement officer comply with this and was your finding based on this, this being the ordinances. The excerpt, I don't know where it comes from, but I think it's been admitted that this is not something that was an ordinance or that was adopted by town meeting. It was an attempt, I guess, I don't know, by someone to put together all of the standards in one page for ease of public consumption. That doesn't make it the law. There may be a mistake on here. There may not have been. I don't know. The question to me is, does the ordinance enacted by the town meeting speak to the placement of mobile homes in the shoreland zone? Does it restrict it or not? Um, I don't see any prohibition on mobile homes in the shoreland zone. For the limited res recreational residential, LRR1, this is a standalone ordinance. This tells you what uses are permitted. And when you go to that table of uses at page 14 of the shoreland zoning ordinance, at least the version I saw online and downloaded today, Take a look at page 14 and then 15. It talks about principal structures and uses. Single family residential. It doesn't say anything about permitting manufactured housing. It doesn't say anything about prohibiting manufactured housing. Now there's a state law, Title 38, Section 4358, that talks about manufactured housing. And it defines manufactured housing to include two types. Type 1 what we call post-1976 mobile homes, 58 feet long, 14 feet wide, or, or longer, uh, that are, are comply with HUD code. That's type one. Type two would be modular homes. Modular homes might also be 14 by 70, but they're not constructed on a permanent chassis. They're brought to the site and then placed on a foundation. Uh, the type one mobile homes are constructed on a chassis and driven out to there, and then you put blocks or a perimeter foundation around them. Those are manufactured 
homes or have manufactured housing as defined by state law. Municipalities uh, are required to allow manufactured housing, whether it's the type one mobiles or, uh, or, or modulars, to be placed in a number of lots, number of locations where stick-built single-family homes are permitted. It doesn't say how many, but if a town wanted to restrict type one mobile homes, it could. From what I see in the shoreland zoning ordinance, as to the shoreland zones, it has not prohibited them. So my interpretation of that, it's up to the board to interpret it, but my advice on that is that mobile homes or modular homes, both manufactured housing under state law, uh, would be permitted in the LRR1 as a single family structure because there's nothing in the shoreland zoning ordinance that I've been able to see, and I'll stand corrected if it's in there, uh, that, that prohibits them from being located in the LLR one. Uh, sorry for the long-winded explanation. Oh, no. But no, that's good. That's good. And, and just um, for the record, <clears throat> under shoreland zoning, section 7, when I know we spoke, spoke about just um, conflicts with um, other ordinances, Says, whenever provision of these shoreland ordinance provisions conflicts with or is inconsistent with another provision of these ordinance provisions, the other provisions of the Raymond Land Use Ordinance or of any other ordinance, regulation, or statute administered by the municipality, the more restrictive provision shall control. So I think for us and the board, maybe one question is, is that excerpt an ordinance, a regulation, or a statute administered by the municipality? That's one. And then in, the, um, in Article 2 of our land use ordinances, B, um, Article 2, B, Number 2, it says, regardless of the existence of purported copies of the land use regulation map, which may from time to time be made or published, the land use regulation map, which shall be located in the office of the town clerk, shall be the final authority to the current land use regulation status of land and water areas, buildings, and other structures in the town. Am I to understand that to mean whatever the official land use regulation map, which I'm not sure, does that include these ordinances? Whatever is in that town office, that's the official record. Whatever's in the town office for a map is the official record. And so th there is a map there for, there's a zoning map, and then mm -hmm. there's also a shoreland zoning map, as I understand it. Right, mm -hmm. Scott? I think we just have a, we just have one map with all map. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, some towns differ in their practices. So there's one map, and that map controls as to zoning boundaries. Okay. So there, it has but there's nothing to do nothing with, to do with the ordinances. No. And as okay. to the question of the excerpt, my my advice to this board is that this excerpt it is not legally enforceable. It's not it's not an ordinance. It wasn't a, if it wasn't adopted by town meeting, it's not an ordinance. It doesn't bind this board or the code enforcement officer. I have a question though, but the standard. Raymond land use ordinance supersedes shoreland if one is, if it's stricter than shoreland. If it's more strict than shoreland, then the more strict would prevail if there were a contest between the two. Right. Uh, there isn't a whole lot on mobile homes or manufactured homes in the land use ordinance. In page 42, it talks about mobile homes in mobile home parks, standards for mobile homes not in mobile home parks, and it talks about meeting all bulk and space standards of the appropriate district that the wheels and other carriage shall be removed from the mobile home placed on the foundation <coughs> and it finds what that foundation is. That's uh, that and uh, basically you can't live in a camper trailer in your driveway. Uh, those are the basic requirements. There are some district requirements that differ. Some say manufactured housing, some say mobile homes, but that's for standards for districts that are under the regular zoning ordinance. We're talking about what the LRRI is for the shoreline zoning. So I think in the land use ordinance section says you must refer to the shoreland zoning ordinance for that right back section. Yeah. 
And I, I believe that also on page 46, when they talk about minimum standards, just it just struck me when they talk about mobile, mobile home parks and setbacks for manufactured housing, it says on lots that are located in shoreland area. So that just struck me as, okay, there are these type of homes in shoreland areas that clearly they're saying were allowed, um, or it wouldn't say that. So, Scott, I have a question. Sure. I'm just looking at the <coughs> land use ordinance, page 44, where it says standards for mobile homes, not in mobile home parks. Yep. Um, and uh, uh, item C talks about the foundation. I looked at the um, application. There's no information about the foundation. I had, I had printed that exact same thing because we were in discussion with Mr. Knight as to what was allowed. Okay. Um, I did print that out to him and I did hand him, <coughs> hand him a, a plan of what a engine, what a slab by the government yeah. requires. Um, I had it sent to me from a gentleman who owns a trailer park in Gorham that he has to put down there. I printed one out for him and was give it, gave it to him. Ideally, I should have printed it out and put it in the building folder that I said that I had given it to him, but he does have a picture of that as well as what's required with the tie downs, six inch slab. Yeah, yeah. Just that it meets the requirements of, of the ordinance. Mm -hmm. Okay. It w it, it, you're right, it should have been attached. It should have been put in there, which it can be. There was a question about a, a permit for electric. Mm -hmm. is, is that still in question? <clears throat> That's not required until before electric work is done. Um, as long as the permit is obtained and paid for and issued, uh, they can start electrical work after that. They don't need it until that time. Okay. I'm a bit confused with, I clearly understand what you're saying, Scott, about the permits in question are fine because it's a manufactured home and that so you're meeting the requirements that you've been given correct as, as, um, the, the permits that we have that are in question what, things that aren't filled out are filled out yeah I mean I did have him write on there to make sure that he wrote it it was a manufactured type I think it's type, type one, one type on one yeah, yeah. And like I, I, it could have been an explanation on there, but I mean, I was the one that was looking at the permits, um, so I knew that I couldn't do any inspections on that. It was already pre-inspected. I mean, I can't tell them to make changes in there. <coughs> and if if you're if you're following the rules you're governed by to do that, I'm not sure why there's a question on the other side saying these permits need to be filled out differently if that's not what he's required to do. I'm really confused by that. I don't. Where do they? Where did they? Where is this home coming from? I mean, we're e sorry. You really have to. I guess. I, I better be where it's coming from. from. Yeah. You'll have to. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Emory March, Two Canal Road. I I don't know anything about this. But there's a building, and have you seen the specifications of the building? No, it has not come up. So we don't know anything. We're taking the word of somebody. Where, where is it being purchased? Who has done an inspection? What kind of windows? Again, everything's an if, if, if. I, I'm just saying there's something incomplete all around. I'm hearing assumptions all around here. That's what I'm hearing. I don't feel like there's anything concrete. This is going across the street from my home. And if I decide to sell my house, I'm told I can't sell my house because no one's gonna wanna see a trailer across the street from my house, regardless of what you call it. And I don't know what it looks like. I, don't, I only hear, hear an age. We don't have any documentation to back up what is being placed across the, across the street from my house, nothing. Do, I hope that you understand that. That's very concerning to me. You know, I think I have the most beautiful baby, but you guys all think it's ugly. It's all a matter of interpretation, but if it's in writing, 
I'm, I'm just saying this should concern you. It does me. That's all. Sorry. Thank you. Please go to the lectern. Um, why are we in public comments? Because my question. What, when, you know, you're free to ask questions to the okay. public, okay. but you, you don't have to allow a public hearing again. Okay, the, right. public, the public comment is done for. The public comment is done, but when you have questions for the public and you address your questions to them, they, they can answer them. All right. Uh, so if this is a question, this is an answer. Yeah, thank you, David Merckx, you Canal Road, Raymond Maine. I mean, a, a lot of what you see here is I, I've reviewed and to answer your question about the building permit piece to it um, when we talk about the incomplete foundation section there, there's no evidence of you know what David is proposing to place in terms of a foundation whether it be slab whether it be you know an actual concrete foundation so there, there's no evidence of that um, when we look the biggest concern is there's an, also an addition, there's an addition being added to this trailer, so it's not simply a, a, a manufactured home coming in, there's also a, a, an addition being added to it. So the, the building permit says it's going to be four bedrooms. So a, a, a manufactured home, mobile home built of that size is coming in, it's really, it's only only two, two bedrooms. So we're, the assumption is that this addition is for an additional two bedrooms, and so there, that would include you know some of the things that aren't aren't filled out which would include you know the floors the exterior walls the interior walls ceilings you know the, the roof I recognize that there is a cross section but there is no floor plan I have no idea what the layout you know is in terms in that addition whether there's going to be you know rooms placed in there therefore interior walls what do the exterior windows look like you know access for somebody to get out if those are bedrooms so that is why we view it incomplete, not so much that it's a manufactured home, but the fact that there's an addition that's going with this, and there's insufficient evidence as to what that addition looks like and how it's to be to be built. Thank you. Would that require I a separate permit? Was the addition a separate yeah. permit? No. I, that's why I only asked for the cross section. Um, I did talk with Mr. Knight as to where this is a engineered structure, the mobile home is is that how this this addition is going to be attached to it he said there is no holes being made into it as where there was a door previous so it doesn't alter the engineering of the mobile home um, there are as far as it was stated to me that it was just an open i didn't ask for a floor plan because it stated to me that it was just a open area at this time uh, if it is turned into a bedroom, they will require egress windows that can be, which also have been uh, have been caught on other houses during rough-in inspection. If the windows aren't the mm -hmm. right size, they're pointed out then and need to be corrected. Well, there is there is indication on the uh, uh, original application that it's a, it's, we're talking about four bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Yep. They so can. it's a it's a pretty good guess. Yeah, that that 12 by 28 is going to be two bedrooms. Yep. So they'll have to have smoke alarms to be wired into the mobile home. Uh, it's a daisy chain, so to speak. So if yeah. one goes out, they all go out. That each individual bedroom will have to have an egress window if they're separated. Mm -hmm. uh, like to my knowledge, right now it 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 was just uh, was told to me as a open area at this time. Well, but that's not what the application says. The application says four bedrooms. Yep. You can. It can sleep up to four. If they put a dividing wall in there, oh. they can update or revise the permission okay. the permit. All right. Anybody else got anything to say? I don't have any um, questions at this time. I still have a lot of questions. I would like to ask. I, I, I do have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm looking at the shoreland zoning provisions myself, and it it's pretty generic. A single-family residential home is allowed yeah. with permission of the CEO. Yep. Yeah. I can't I can't find anything in here that says a manufactured home is not allowed. Besides the excerpt, which if the excerpt is not an official part of the ordinances um, on 
I'm struggling with that piece, one. Mm -hmm. And number two, maybe it's a side question, but I am a little concerned about the driveway issue. Um, that, that is important. That's important if it's someone else's land and it's being used improperly. Um, and I'm wondering, do we, do we deal with that separately? Is that between the owners? How is that addressed? I have discussed it with Mr. Knight that he brought up that he owns that property. I asked that it be proven. If it's not, then he's going to have to move that driveway okay. or do another drive because right now he has access off that main road. So um, he, he is not permitted to use that driveway unless he pr yeah, provides. He needs, well, he needs, to, yeah, he needs to provide and prove that that is on his property. Okay. And like you said, there was discussion as to whether or not that section was his father's or not. That's something that he's going to have to prove to me. Um, that could basically hold up the occupancy permit. I wouldn't give it to him until we have that proven. Um, if, you know, in case he may have to change the driveway. Um, and as far as the single family residence, if I may, I, this is how I chased it down. I went to main.gov, single family resident for definitions. Single family resident means a dwelling consisting of only one dwelling unit. I follow it down to dwelling. Dwelling means the structure, all or part of which designed or used for human habitation, including a dwelling unit. Came down to dwelling unit. Dwelling unit means any room, group of rooms, or other areas of a structure designed or used for human habitation. Then I go to the definition that we have in our shoreland zoning where it uses residential dwelling unit. I followed that down through and it just said the term shall include mobile homes and rental units that comply um, along with being a group of rooms designed permanent seasonal uh, cooking, sleeping, uh, cooking, sleeping, and toilet facilities. Okay. I, I think we can maybe shed some light on your question if you, regarding these regulations. If I Mr. Chair. Gary Vogel, Drummond Woodson. So, um, Mr. Katsikis indicated the provision from the uh, code that said if you have ordinance, statute, or regulation that conflict, you have to apply the most, the most the stricter of them. Uh, if you look at the top of the excerpt of district regulations, that's exactly what it says, an excerpt of district regulations. And so we know this is not an ordinance provision, but you know, doesn't the town, the code enforcement officer, have the authority to adopt and to, to, you know, to promulgate regulations or rules that they use to apply the ordinance? And it seems to me that this is exactly what this table does. Um, it, it provides an opportunity you know, for the town, just like, I mean, there's a ton of things that Scott has talked about. How does he apply these regulations? He, has, you know, he, contacts, um, he contacted you know, other property owners. He contacted uh, the, um, you know, he refers to information that's available from the Maine Municipal Association. Um, those are all things that the town can do. The town can also adopt regulations. They're not the ordinance, but if they're stricter, they are intended to, you know, you're intended to apply them. I mean, it wasn't for no reason that this chart was put together. You know, the chart was put together to be a guide to, frankly, to avoid us from having to go through what we're going through tonight. And, you know, while I recognize that it's not in the ordinance, you know, it's here. I think the town has the authority to adopt regulations that aren't in conflict with the ordinance. As we've said, the ordinance doesn't say that they're permitted. It also doesn't say that they're prohibited. But we have this additional information that we're all struggling with. And I think that the, my interpretation would be that the stricter, you know, should still apply and that, that the town has the authority to adopt these, you know, types of regulations. Mr. Vogel, the, the town does have the authority to adopt regulations, certainly. I don't think anybody would argue with that. Where's the regulation? You, you, what, you are, what you're saying is that that chart is a regulation, and it isn't. It's a chart. It's meant, it's, it's meant uh, as a, 
quick shorthand for the public. If you can show me the regulation on which that comment is based, I'm going to agree with you 100%. Well, I'm not saying it's an ordinance. I'm saying you have... I, no, you said the town has the right to adopt regulations, and I agreed with you. Show me the regulation. I think it's this chart. I, I think you're reaching. Scott, do you know where this chart came from? As far back as Mary did some work on it, we found it going back as far as 2002. I mean, but I did look at prior shoreland zoning ordinances. 2013 has the exact wording that we do now in 2016. Um, so I don't know, I mean, it was basically brought about to me as just a, like what we call basically a quick reference uh, to what's allowed. The only reason why I looked at it is because it said of 2014 and I know that we had adopted uh, new amendments in 2016. Mm -hmm. That's why I questioned it, and then that's when I looked in the ordinance and I could not find it in there. Because I'll state my opinion, I'm with Steve 100%. If, if I could find in the town yeah. ordinances, which is what the town creates for our rule, that's our official rules and regulations, if I could find this, I'd agree 100%. My problem is I cannot find anywhere in the ordinances nope. anything to match this. Um, and it's, it's, I, I can't, I'm having trouble considering an excerpt that someone put together. If someone actually created an error in that, they cannot create town ordinances by themselves <laughs> by putting an error in a chart. So that's what I'm struggling with myself. And in hindsight, do you see for any reason to find this application as incomplete? Oh, the minor correction of the shoreland zoning on that, which I can ask for a revision, which there actually is a revision. They've moved the, the septic system a little bit. They didn't like the position of it, so there's going to be a revision on that. I can ask for it at that time, uh, that that be corrected. Um, but other than that, other than a, I mean, I deem it complete for what I have to deal with on a daily basis with plans and stuff. Yes, I do. So for that revision, there's no need to create a new application? No, there's revisions done quite regularly. Uh, right. A lot of times the house, the position, the pits, the position of the septic system doesn't match. They decide to move the house. So now they got to move the septic system after the permit has been issued. I usually just get a revision as long as I get that revision before I go out and do my inspections. And I, that happens quite a bit. The, co the, the board has the authority, just to, to make sure. <laughs> this is a change since the last time I was here, about three years ago. There's a change in your authority, and that is on, I mean, it's a code enforcement officer's decision. You hold a de novo hearing. You hear all the parties, you take in all the evidence, and you get to make the decision. It isn't just a, do we, uh, do we support his decision or do we deny his decision? You get to make your own decision. Uh, if you were, and I'm not suggesting you, you have to or should, but I'm just, if you were to uh, deny the appeal, you could support the code enforcement officer's decision uh, issuing the permit, but you could also attach conditions. The conditions might be that they provide a foundation in accordance with Article 9K, that uh, the applicants show a right to use the adjoining property for the driveway or else relocate it on their property. Uh, it doesn't mean you're, you're condemned to make any, you know, to, to avoid those issues. You, you can, you could take care of that in conditions if you were to go forward with that. In addition to the conditions, being that there's a question with regards to the ordinances and said chart that was on the website, is it's there? Still there? No, it should be gone. No, no. I just had. To, we just had. To, I thought we just took that down again. I'll have to look. I didn't see it on there when I looked last. Well, that could be a the, the the chart that was there. In addition, with in the question with the ordinances, because we don't create the ordinances. Um, the 
town council does. Well, they, they approve and disapprove the ordinances. Town Being meeting. that there is a question with regards to the ordinances, mm -hmm. um, can we defer it to clarification or <coughs> question the town council on this with regards to the fact that, one, there is a meeting coming up? Well, what you could do, if you felt you didn't have enough information before you this evening, you could postpone this meeting to your next meeting or, or whatever. You could postpone this matter to the next meeting to get some information or clarification back with regard to this excerpt. However, I mean, you have in front of you information. It says it's an excerpt. There are two ways you could have an excerpt. An excerpt could be I'm going to excerpt a page from this and I'm going to copy it. That does not appear to be what this is. You will not find <coughs> what's in attachment three in your land use ordinance or in the shoreline zoning ordinance. I think Mr. Boulder would agree. You won't find ex this excerpt, attachment three, in either document, correct? I understand that. That's my understanding. It's not in the land use ordinance. It's not in the shoreline zoning ordinance. I looked. I didn't see it. Um, yeah, neither did I. So it, as an excerpt, what the code enforcement officer has said is that this was put together as a sort of cheat sheet in the code office and it's been around and put placed on the website for that purpose. Uh, so you have information before you that this is not an ordinance. This, is, this was simply something that was for the ease of administration put together by the department. Uh, I don't know if you're going to get any information from the town council on that that would help you make a decision beyond what you have in front of you this evening. But that's this board to, for this board to assess. Uh, Scott, how long, how long did you say this chart has been up on the website? I saw Or in existence? I saw it 2009. I wasn't aware that it went back to 2002. That's the only one that I had eyes on. So this goes back to 2002? It, yes. And how many revisions have uh, been made in the, in the, in the shoreland zoning? Ordinances since then? Uh, probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, around eleven, maybe twelve, a quick count. Okay. Do we have any reason to believe that this chart is up to date? <coughs> well, it, it includes okay. the twelve revisions. Well, it just says that it, I mean, the only thing that you could pull together was the top on the page where it just says that it was. As of, as of 2014. Oh, okay. So that doesn't include the 2016 Correct. revisions. Okay. Patricia, I'll ask you a quick question. Based, that's a great question that you propose. You know what you would ask specifically? Well, I'm, I'm curious because this, this document's been up on the website for so long, uh, maybe doing either some digging or archiving to find out uh, is it part of an old ordinance? Mm -hmm. Could it be somewhere? I think the town council would have that answer. Well, one of the things that we did in looking to this is they did have uh, Kayla Gonzalez do some searching into town minutes to see if there was something because it has happened before with the fire ordinances mm -hmm. that some were discussed and voted on during a town meeting but yet were never put into writing. She, she did a scan for the words for mobile not allowed. She said that she couldn't find anything in references to that. I uh, can't remember how far back she went to the minutes. She went back uh, 2013. I think is the other farther she went back. And because in case it got missed and it wasn't moved forward right. it should have been. Uh, we couldn't find anything in, in the minutes. The, uh, she went to the town meeting mm -hmm. rather than planning board because that's where it was would have been voted on. Yeah. And uh, we couldn't find anything then as to who. Did, did she use both she language, went. both both uh, terms? She used Trip several other ones. We used, okay, yeah, mobile yeah, home, yeah, manufactured homes. Manufactured homes, I told her to look for type two, oh, type one, to see yeah, what okay. was out there. So that was recently. Uh, Yes, that was in the, she just did it probably within the past, I must say, two to three weeks. Okay, because I don't think there's okay. a question as to your approving the application. I think the biggest question here is the argument whether this um, document 
that's been floating around for many years is considered to be valid, and I don't feel comfortable myself saying that it is or isn't. I would feel better if the town, the town council, council could could have some input on this. Yes. Well, this document is not controlling under any circumstances. It isn't because it's it's on the website and it's not in any ordinances. I right. agree there totally. So I'm not I'm not sure that this document affects our decision here tonight, uh, oh. one way or the other. It, Mr. Uh, Katsvika said there were. Excuse you know, me. If you I speak, can you please go to the podium? Yeah. It's recorded. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Katsvika has indicated that there were indication situations in which there were fire ordinances that were adopted but were never printed. Or maybe Scott said that. I didn't say anything. Scott. Oh, that was me. Okay. That was me. So what we don't know is, you know, was this ever adopted? Excuse me. We do know that. I asked him. He said they did a, they did a, well, they did scan a search under and the went and went back to, to 2013. Right. And there's no indication. No. True. So the, by searching mobile home or manufactured home to 2013, there was no indication. We don't know whether, you know, there was a, whether there was any excerpt of district regulations that was approved at any time you know, prior to, during, since 2013. I mean, it's not likely to say manufactured home if the town was going to adopt this and, you know, approve it. Um, we don't know that. I'll tell you what it does say. It says Town of Raymond Land Use Ordinance, excerpt of district regulations for residential development. I looked through the land use ordinance. There's nothing about this. There's no argument there. The okay. question is whether or not the town right. adopted this as a regulation, the discussion what, that we had earlier. If I may, what the document says is the following chart contains the general zoning requirements from the land use ordinance for residential development. It's a chart derived right. from the ordinance. Please review your building permit application with the code enforcement officer to assure compliance with all aspects of the ordinance. Office hours are Tuesday. Yeah. Eight. This this is a document to inform the public, and it contains what is at least under the current ordinance a mistake. It contains information regarding the ability to place manufactured housing in a shoreland zoning uh, district, which is not in the shoreland zoning ordinance, and is not in the land use ordinance. I, my advice to the board, based on what this says, the history that the code enforcement officers provided. This document has no legal dignity. Exactly. Now, you can ask the Thank Board of Selectmen to, to bless that opinion. <laughs> I, I don't know that they have much to add, uh, but you know, it's up to the Board. I mean, if you want to wait for the town meeting tomorrow and the guidance that the town is going to take in terms of whether or not this should be allowed, I mean, the, the question about whether or not this is a complete application is something that you know, you may want to consider in further detail. I mean, the, for example, the whole idea that you have a 1979 or 1981 mobile home, we don't even know where it was manufactured, and that we just, the code enforcement officer just takes that for granted that he doesn't have to do any kind of inspection, mm -hmm. or that the bedrooms in the addition are going to meet the regulation. I mean, to me, that, those are serious questions that you know, the neighbors and everyone is entitled to have a more thorough review of before a building permit is allowed. That would give you an opportunity to say, let's put this on hold until, you know, the town acts on its moratorium. Well, I think the Knights also put themselves in jeopardy by going ahead without a, with only um, the assurance uh, that, that, or the only inf information that they have is that it's okay um, if they if they fail to meet the requirements that are in the codes they're not going to get a, a CO so th they are they are putting themselves at risk if they don't if they don't conform and we've established that it is complete except for these no, you still have, no, you have, you haven't yet established that. You have to vote on that. The, 
the code enforcement officer stated his opinion. You, as a board, having a de novo yes. uh, um, hearing, have to make that decision on your own. Okay. Agreed. Thank you. So I think it's whether we're comfortable moving on this, or we would like an opinion of the town council at this point. Can you, anyone want to make a motion? Okay. Are you more comfortable at this point, Patricia? You said I really strongly would. I would feel uh, better putting this off to the next meeting and getting more information. I agree. Do you see any harm in that, Steve? No, I don't see any harm in that. Well, wait a minute. Hang on for a second. Um, when were you folks planning to start construction? They already it is possible. I'd say they already have. One, the permit has been issued. Oh. But I did explain to them during this process that they are going forward at their own risk. That if it is turned over or anything, then they'll have to take whatever they put in. They'll have to take it out and or at least the trailer part. Okay. Um, you, uh, you understand by, by going ahead, you are placing yourselves at risk. Yeah. Okay. Would you like to make a motion? Actually? Would someone make a motion? Um, when would you postpone this to if you do that? It would have to be the next meeting, wouldn't it? would the next meeting be? The end of August. Last Monday. August 27th. I will not be here. Um, move it up a week or... Can we do that? Is that even permitted? You can have special meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have done it, yeah. Okay. Had special uh, so, so are we talking about the 20th? Or are 20th are we talking that, about that works for the board. You need to, we need to make sure that enough people are going to be here. I can do that. Yeah, I'll be here. Okay. What date is it? Um, August 20th. 20th. It's a Monday. I'll try to make the motion if you want. Uh, if yeah, you just please. Yeah. Table. I move, move to the table. Move yeah. to table the uh, application um, of Jennifer and Ronald Finney to August 20th. August 20th. And we request that the town council the town board of selectmen. Town board of selectmen, excuse me. Um, give one last bit of research <coughs> to the excerpt that we've been provided in this application to assure us as to whether that has any official um, standing. standing in regards to the rules, regulations, and ordinances of this, the town of Rima. I second that motion. Shall we vote? We shall. All in favor of the motion? Anybody opposed? It's carried. Okay, good. So that in, that concludes the public hearing. Or that the hearing that concludes your, this, this item this? on the agenda. Oh, okay. <laughs> so everybody can leave. <laughs> so you have to, you, you, what is there anything else on the agenda for tonight? Yeah, uh, we have code enforcement officers and com communications, but as far as the canal, you're all excused. No, you can. You're, you're welcome. welcome. You're, you're welcome. It's an open area. You're welcome that to stay if you the wish. Is over. Yeah, but the, I think the stuff you care about is over. Go home. Go to bed. I'm going to go to bed. Go, go to bed. Go to bed. One request. So when they give this information, if you do get information back from the town council or the clerk or whatever, can you share that with the property owners and the appellants? <coughs> We will share it with the world. I, just for a point of clarification, are you requesting we share it prior to the meeting? Is that what you're asking? Well, when you get, yes, when you get it, we would like. Yeah, basically when we refine results, we'll email it to them and let them know so they have it. We won't give 34 pages to you at a meeting. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Communication from the code officer. Yeah, code officer. Communication. Uh, communication. So yes, com number three. Code enforcement officer communication. So far, we have nothing else coming up. Okay. First. Okay. 
Thank you for that communication. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.